Greetings once again. Welcome to part three of the exhaust nozzle assembly. Uh, as you can tell, maybe, um, I changed a little bit of a wardrobe here and I'm actually making this video seconds after I made the part two conclusion video. You couldn't tell. I have the same shirt on and the same Bob Dylan song still on the satellite radio. Um, anyway, but I, I have official Jet City uh, attire to accent this. Uh, thanks again, Jay. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and continue with uh, putting this thing back together uh, as we keep repeating ourselves. And hopefully this time we'll make a little more progress. As I said previously, I like to edit it a little bit more so it's not quite so boring. Uh, as you can kind of tell here, there's I got a few things together. Um, and this is shot obviously after that. <laughs> And uh, so we'll catch you up on what I got so far here. It's partially assembled. And uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, button up the rest of this uh, turbine bearing housing and enclosure and such. Stand by. Uh, we're going to prepare to install a brand new bearing uh, into the housing here for the turbine. Uh, the rear bearing, turbine bearing assembly. We have a and we have a brand new bearing here in the package yet to be open and I got my gloves on here what I'm gonna say is that this race is a press fit or a snug fit in the housing so we'll show, demonstrate that here right now this is a self aligning bearing as you can see the bearing can swivel within the outer race and actually there are three races on this bearing we have the inner race we have the ball bearing outer race and then we have the overall outer race. I don't know how to describe it. But a self-aligning bearing will allow the shaft to be slightly, it'll make up for a slight misalignment in the case from one end to the other so that the shaft will still rotate without being in a bind. All right, as you can see, this bearing can just about press that dude in there with your fingers but however you cannot okay so generally what we'll do is we're going to heat this housing slightly in an oven uh, warm it and which will allow this to expand and then this bearing will basically just drop right in there because this the bearing we will uh, obviously not put in the oven keep it at room temperature heat this housing and You'll have a uh, slightly larger housing bore here, bearing bore will increase a little bit because of thermal expansion and then allow the race to drop in. Once it cools, it'll be in there. All right, so now we gotta pull this dude back out of here. Christmas kitty motif um, hot pad for handling the um, hot turbine bearing housing, so. Don't say we ain't got some style. I'm gonna go get the bearing. Alright, I placed the uh, bearing in my refrigerator at the same time uh, had this bearing housing in a, a little convection type toaster oven so we could heat it up to about 225 degrees or so. And we'll see if that doesn't allow this to go in a little easier. I put my gloves on here because we don't want to handle uh, this bearing with anything but clean gloves. Let's see if this fits any easier than it did. Look at that. It had my glove pinched between it and the outer race. And the how it had my glove pinched there but that's how much that changed just heating that up you, that just fell in place okay so there we go it's in there we let this cool and when it cools down to room temperature uh, the bearing won't fall out even though it is retained with a, a cover and a, a bearing retainer piece that also acts as a cover but there we have <clears throat> I got this from a company that uh, sells bearings and they found it back on a shelf somewhere. Um, it's um, very, very uncommon because um, I don't know why. 
the uh, inner part of this bearing design is still used um, but it is manufactured in a standard square uh, or rectangular or you know square edged uh, ray, outer ray so you, that like a standard bearing normally you would see but this uh, uh, self aligning feature with that third piece this outer race outermost race is uh, makes it a rare bird so I was very fortunate to find this bearing um, I was able to find two because the same bearing also is used in the front so I'll be able to restore the engine here with uh, two brand new ball bearings okay now we're gonna transfer we'll shift gears here and move over to the uh, exhaust nozzle housing and uh, let's try to put this thing in there as soon as it cools down All right, we're gonna in, got our bearing uh, installed. Uh, the housing's cooled off now, where we can work with it. Uh, we're getting ready to connect our uh, air and oil mist tubes um, to the fittings here on the back of the bearing housing. And uh, these, uh, as I showed you before, this set of uh, tubes pass through one of the struts holding the bearing housing, the holding the rear support. And this allows it to connect to our, our plumbing outside of that uh, environment. Okay, uh, we've already lubricated these uh, fittings with a little turbine or engine oil, and I've already uh, used some adhesive um, gasket adhesive to install my gasket so I don't lose it, stays in place. This is uh, going to be kind of inside the strut when it connects, and I just want to be sure it's lined up with the holes. Okay. So here we go, we thread these on here, get these AN fittings started, and it should hopefully be self-aligning. This basically has to be to the 9 o'clock position. Um, this would be the top of the engine or 12 o'clock uh, index, so we're looking at the back, but to the left would be to the 9 o'clock position, 90 degrees, so we want to be sure that these are uh, straight aligned because if not they'll be in a bind trying to install them and we want them just right. It looks like they're pretty self-aligning. Let's snug this and what we'll do is I'm going to see if I can get that to uh, we'll see how it fits. Okay we'll see how we will see how our lines fit through here. There we go. That's sitting in there. Wow, that's awesome. And let's see what we got over here. Boy, you know what? I think we're good to go. Alignment looks real good. It doesn't look like it's. I don't know. Let's see. Bolt holes look fairly aligned. I might be able to put a little upward tweak on that and then snug the line fittings. I think we're good. All right, let's take this back out. Install this uh, bearing housing in, into the exhaust nozzle housing. We have our tubing aligned and checked and realigned and double checked to where it fits nice. Look at that. I just kind of precision fit here, and we will go ahead and try to we'll be ready to go. Right now, well, this will be held in with the bearing retainer, and there's a spacer ring, which we have here. This is pretty well cleaned up here, all right? Holes all lined up, and then uh, we have the bearing retainer itself, which is our housing that uh, I had coated a while back to prevent corrosion. We'll get this uh, screwed in, and when that's installed, torqued, we'll have uh, some safety wire to do. And then we'll have the front cover to install. So, stand by. 
All right, we're going to, ready to uh, seal this bearing into place here. Um, I got, this is a shim. I called it a spacer ring earlier, but it's technically a shim. And these are selected to match the bearing with the housing and cover. So we have a pin, what they call bearing pinch. We want to just lightly clamp this outer race in place, uh, even though it is a snug fit. Uh, the engine... Uh, heats up and there's thermal expansion so they require that shim so you gotta keep these shims with the appropriate bearing housing. I'm gonna put just a little bit of turbine oil Oop. I said a little bit I know you're not supposed to put stuff like this on your hands but you know what a little dab will do you maybe. Uh, I'm just coating this with a film of oil just if nothing else keep it from rusting because in the long run this is going to be sitting for a little bit and out my bearing has been taken out of its new packing we don't want environment to get to this I've, I've already pre pre oiled the ball bearing itself with a little turbine oil earlier so there that is a I guess we'll consider that a light coating same way with this uh, in here this piece that holds the bearing in place is not a cast aluminum or, this is, uh, or anything alloy. This is steel itself. we got quite a bit. Uh, it's got to have some strength to it. Okay, this is indexed. The holes are not equally spaced. So if you don't have them in the right indexing, it will not, will not line up. It only works in one spot. We're all, there are 12 retaining bolts where all bolts line up that's what you want okay I've uh, already treated a few of these screws with let's get this lined up here there we go with uh, some NFC anti-locking compound and we'll see if we can hand thread a couple in here to get started And there we go. <clears throat> the air that's forced into the back of the bearing housing itself through the bearing is the air that is pushed out around the shaft and through this baffle against the back of the turbine rotor. Okay, so that gives you a cooling effect and a net flow out away from the bearing. Therefore, heat doesn't have a chance to work toward the bearing. Thank you. As in, as in any uh, gas turbine engine, airflow, uh, cooling airflow is, is the secret to life. And the more that I tinker with these things and see how the passages are, and how intricate they are, it's amazing. The kind of ugly paint job I gave it here with a brush was, uh, sorry it doesn't spray, I just brushed it, a couple of coats. Uh, the sealant is uh, oil proof and heat resistant. In this environment, um, I don't believe it's going to be super hot. If there is, we've got a real problem anyway. It'll be shut down well before that. Um, the cooling air will not allow the flame or thousand degrees of heat, hot air to enter this, uh, this whole chamber is isolated from uh, everything else. It has its own cooling air. Okay, well, um, I'm going to coat the rest of these uh, screws and we'll get them installed and then we'll come back. Okay, I got 11 of the 12 screws installed, threaded in. I left one out and I have this alignment tool here, which is basically a punch, but it's tapered and it's going into setting in there to line and, and be sure this is centered as best possible. Uh, there's a little give and take on the holes of the bolt of this bearing retainer in relation to the tapped holes in the bearing support in relation to the tapped holes in the bearing support itself that holds all this together okay so what I've got here is this lined up so with that being in lined up here we can snug these down I have a, just a socket and a short extension and I'm just doing this with my fingers because this has to be drawn in 
equally. So we'll just kind of play this little game back and forth here a few times between the three o'clock and the nine o'clock. Okay, let's. Okay, we'll try down here about five o'clock. Let's see what snug this up. To snug these bolts and draw everything up evenly without over tightening anything at one too much at one time. And if I get all these fairly, you know, hand tight here with this tool I'm using, I'm gonna then I'll remove that punch, my alignment tool, so to speak. I'll remove that and we will then insert that last number 12 bolt. And then we can go to torquing them all down to proper specs. Okay, remove the alignment tool, put just the last bolt screw here, we'll get a little of the anti-seize compound. This is also a thread lubricant as we, as we talked about before. Uh, the end of seasal stops this from basically rusting or corroding in place, but it also coats the threads and makes a nice smooth, just turning this, you wouldn't believe it. It's, you know, it's almost like a grease. It's a lubricant for the threads, which really gets your torque specs more accurate or more precise, or because you're not uh, binding the threads, you're turning the wrench and tightening, and the measurement of your tightness is the compression more than it is the drag of the threads being tightened. Just make sure they're all along their way here. Some of them, as you go back, you, some of them's loosened up again because we've slowly brought this together and snugged her up. We can now uh, make a little sheet here, a little cheat sheet for the torque of these screws involved in this project and the turbine bearing retainer screws are uh, the range is 75 to 85 pounds an inch okay so we get our trusty snap-on 3 8 drive here it's unlocked so let's start with a lower setting though instead of go we're not going to run these exact straight to the maximum or the final torque we will run them up say to an even I don't know let's start with 30 and we'll see what we got there. We get them all to 30, then we'll increment them up. Uh, you're always better to go in increments. Uh, sometimes the service manual will s specify an increment, and sometimes they will just say torque. So we'll start here at 12 o'clock. There he is, and we'll go here across at 6. That's... And I'll see that had to turn a little bit more. Let's go to 9. three okay now let's go here to seven eleven these numbers I'm calling out are my clock theory because this is or 12 screws here this is 12 o'clock six o'clock I know this is off centered and then we're to index it but that's it anyway nine and three okay so I'm just trying to work my way around here Go to four and ten. I'm doing basically the diametrically opposed pattern. I've already got the nine and three. Now we're going to two, eight, back to three and nine. Okay, everything is at thirty pound inches or pounds inch. So then now we'll uh, run it on up. Let me go to 60 pounds inch. Start here at 12. Okay, they're all at 60, so now we'll go to the final, which will be 80 pound inches, or in pounds inch. Let's go here again with 12, here we go. Okay. Keep 
this thing blocked because it keeps wanting to rotate and roll. Okay, here we go. Final check of the final final torque. There we go. 12 screws tightened to 80 pound inches. Now, guess what? The next step will be safety wiring these before we install our cover, which obviously the front cover will encase all of this. Um, actually, to do that, let's see, we have to install a, we have a gasket, a cover, we have two gaskets. We have to cement a gasket in place here so it doesn't fall off. And uh, that will hold it in place while we install the front cover. But before we do all that, this has to be safety wire, so we'll do that in the next step. Well, you just witnessed a turbine bearing being installed in its housing and the, that housing and sub-assembly installed into exhaust nozzle assembly and you know, then the bearing retainer got her all torqued down and now we're ready for safety wire hopefully in a couple more videos we'll have the exhaust nozzle assembly wrapped up and then um, we'll have be setting it aside and we'll dig out the next piece okay I appreciate your support and your comments and your viewership again as I said always appreciated thank you for watching and we will uh, see you in part four.